I was born and raised in a time and a place when baby girls were not valued much. We were just seen as a future baby production machine and no need to invest us anything, a special education. Welcome everyone to this very special episode on the Development Effectiveness Strategies channel. We've got an exciting interview today with a guest by the name of Kelly Bader. If you don't already know Kelly as a Amazon best-selling author from the book A Little Girl Called Grace, you're going to really enjoy her hearing her story and hearing the life that was changed remarkably coming from a very difficult, difficult situation. I'm looking forward to her sharing her story with us and give some suggestions for those nonprofit leaders, how they can make a difference with their organization. I think you'll like what you're going to hear. You know, I, I can't thank you enough for uh, wanting to do the broadcast uh, with us today. Uh, this is for the Development Effectiveness Strategies channel and Jim and Java. We uh, are, are just really blessed today to, uh, to have um, Kelly Bader on with us. Um, would you mind for our viewers just uh, starting off a little bit so that everybody gets to know this, uh, you know, tell your story, tell uh, how you got to this point in your life. You, you've just had an unbelievable background, unbelievable story. And I wondered if you'd mind starting out by sharing that with our viewers. Sure. I, you know, first of all, I, I'm, I'm nobody special, really. And uh, um, just like everybody else, I was born and raised in a time and a place when baby girls were not valued much. We were just seen as a future baby production machine and no need to invest us anything, a special education. And growing up, you know, there was about one and a half decades of my life that I'll never know what happened, what gonna happen to me in the night because of my mother and her drunker boyfriends. You know, they are um, knife, furniture, flying in the air was a norm. And so, and because of that, you know, I just try to, you know, kind of got out of that environment um, as much as I, as early as I could. And that was the time that education was my only, um, you know, I see it as the only savior. And uh, so in that time, you know, Taiwan, you know, we have the education system is after nine years obligation and you have to enter a national exam, whether you can go to top three girls school, the senior high school, so that you may get a chance later on to go to university. We are talking about ratio between like a one to one, one to 3,800 people. So the ratio is very competitive. And I got into the number two the girls school and they got into university with another exam. Um, then I, you know, uh, while I tried to escape from the chaotic situation at home and also went through the sexual abuse and family violence, um, I walked into a wrong marriage and walked out heavily wounded. And that's where um, at the same time, I, start, I just started my corporate uh, career. And that's where I met a God. Um, and you know, uh, one of the uh, colleagues at work brought me to a church. And, you know, those time at two, I mean, now it's three decades ago, uh, Taiwan, you know, only like 2% of population were Christians. So I had to fight to become a Christian. Uh, when I told my mom I'm gonna get baptized, you know, she kicked me out of the house mm. and literally. Um, and so, on the way, you know, try to climb the copper ladder and we have those situation of, because it's a very male dominated um, uh, situation. So uh, I remember in US, I love uh, a, a movie called Hidden Figures, you know, those real hero behind the NASA, you know, uh, they, they uh, the, the launch project, right? The, those uh, African American ladies. I remember the key cast Catherine that, you know, she need to go to ladies room and then she had to run a couple of blocks in order to go to ladies room. Well, I did not have to run a couple of blocks, but I do have to run a couple of floors because often that when um, I was one of the youngest executive and worst, quote unquote worst, I am a woman. And so there was no ladies room on those floors. 
So that just kind of tell you the interesting situation there. And afterwards, when I, uh, you know, want to become an entrepreneur, and I just like many of you, you know, you seeking, you know, personal development, growth, and stuff like that. And I remember I was uh, told by a, a very well-known coach, and he should forever remain nameless because a lot of people know about him. And he told me that, uh, uh, Kelly, you know, what do you want to do next? I say, hey, I really feel like I can start a podcast uh, to help people. And he said, oh, so you mean Chinese podcast? I say, no, English one, because most of my clients are in North America and UK, they are all speaking English. And then he looked at me like, say, oh, you know, girl, you are a big girl, you know, uh, and you tell your truth as American, I won't listen to your podcast because you are not American, you are not British, English is not your uh, native na language. And and then at the same token, I, when I want to publish my book, A Little Girl Called Grace in 2012, uh, there was a there was a, also known a CNBC journalist told me that, hey, you know, won't work. It won't work because nobody will read your uh, English written book. Mm. And God has a way to kind of prove people wrong, I think. And uh, to cut the story very short, you know, I came home from a New York that pitch, uh, uh, pitch tour and I put my marketing head on and uh, utilize Facebook ads and different other stuff. And we saw over 13,000 books in 60 days. Um, and I mailed a copy to that journalist <laughs> to, to say, thank you. Here's a book. Here we are. And it just afterwards, you know, I even uh, got the opportunity to speak on business stages, take that stage. And, and, and in this season of 53 year old, I'm just really passionate about to help Christian entrepreneurs to create their freedom by create a profitable business. Well, I was on a seminar that you led last week. And of course, I'd, I'd encourage any of our viewers, if you have an opportunity to participate in any Kelly seminars, they're extremely valuable. We talked about last week, we talked about the idea of telling our story and telling the founder's story. Um, for, for those nonprofit leaders, those individuals in nonprofits, those executives in nonprofits, why is 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 there why is it so important to have an understanding of the story whether it be the founder story whether the organizational story why is that so important to their to their constituents so i want you to ask yourself say what if you don't share your story then how can you stand out then right mm -hmm. um it, it's in the end of the day uh personally i believe there is no b2b but it's my my uh, business mentor, one of my business mentors, Chris Docker, he said P2P. It's always people to people. Right. Right. Uh, even I go to pitch or something to a, a company, to an organization, it's still, it's, it's, I'm talking to people, right? And so especially when it comes to a nonprofit organization, normally you want people to support your causes. You have to, yeah, people, does people know that we need to support the poor, the needy, the, all that? Yeah, we all know that, right? But then there's all plenty of causes out there. So why should they support yours, right? So that's where that your specific founder story, that how you got started and, and what is your journey and what is your vision for this organization? Because when you share that, there is a specific group of people out there <laughs> they will be able to connect with you that's how we wired right we are wired to connect to specific stories uh it's just that you see in the movie theater somebody i mean 10 people watch the same movie but everybody come out of movie theater they have different kind of feeling different right. kind of feedback right. because you got connected in different point of the journey uh, of that uh, main cast. So does this make sense? 
Oh, absolutely, Kelly. Um, and it's the same way with our nonprofit organizations. What what separates if you're if you're a, a organization against human trafficking? What separates you from another organization down the street that uh, also is involved in fighting human trafficking? So finding out what makes you different is so important. Yeah, how is it difference better than better? Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because I again, I truly believe that there is a crowd that would just uh, attract to my message. Mm -hmm. And there is a crowd that attract to other pe people's message. Uh, I'm not able to serve all, right? And uh, have that say, I think uh, if, if Jim is okay, I, I think I got to share that there's a three piece that you must have. Sure. Uh, yeah, when you uh, really no matter you are nonprofit or for profit, really, the three P's to to thrive, so to speak, uh, for your business or your organization, right? So the first P is uh, perspectives, or we call it point of view, right? You need to let your people know that what are you standing for? If you don't, because if you don't stand for something, that means you stand for nothing, <laughs> right? <laughs> you fall for anything, yep. Your position is very blurred and blend in with others, right? It's very hard for your audience to find that, you know, find you and to resonate with you. Just ask yourself a question that those leaders that you are following, that you admire, if I ask you, say, why do you like that person, right? And so you could resonate with them. The second piece of your personality, right? So uh, if, if you guys are watching or listening to this, this uh, interview, you probably can figure out by now I'm, I'm a straight shooter, right? <laughs> so that's my personality. And each one of us are wired differently. And when you show up the real you, and whether it's a bubbly, quiet, serious, introvert, whatever, you know, that's totally fine. The problem came when we try to copy other people. Mm -hmm. We try to see, okay, this person or this organization, they are doing this great. So let's also do that. If that's not how you wire, that's not your mission, your calling, then you almost like you put a filter in front of your picture, right? Mm -hmm. So you kind of look not really you, but not really them. Right. And that's where you are inviting the comparison game and, and imposter syndrome to come to attack you. Mm. Right. And the third P is a presence. Uh, presence is, I would say that visibility is responsibility. You know, mm. I see a lot of um, uh, nonprofit organization or churches, you know, if there is no activity, I mean, if there's no another uh, sponsoring active um, uh, events or or if it's not Sundays, you know, we don't hear from them, mm -hmm. right? Or we don't see them because you need to show up to connect with you with your audience. Again, it's about relationship, right? It's right. about people. And so you really have to ask yourself what kind of percentage you are, how much is your presence from front of your audience. Mm. And nowadays there are a lot of tools you can do that, you know, uh, batch up the content, all that. But you need both, both kind. Mm. So your organization can thrive. Absolutely. Well, I, I know our viewers can definitely see, uh, they can feel the enthusiasm, the excitement, um, just coming right through you, Kelly. I appreciate that. I, I want to give you, in the few minutes that we've got left, I want to just give you an opportunity. Um, uh, what kinds of services can you provide for people and uh, how can those individuals get in touch with you uh, either to, you know, view your podcast, view your, um, you know, it's certainly I'll, I'll put all Instagram and, and all the opportunities to, to reach out to you. But uh, how can people take advantage of, you know, seminars and things like I was on last week? Um, what uh, what kinds of things can our, our viewers uh what services can you provide for them? Well, I think if you want to know um, 
uh, you know, keep updates for me. Obviously, it's better to hop on my email list. Um, and there, I think at the moment, the easiest way is uh, you can go to powerofoneframework.com and forward slash masterclass. Because there, you can watch your free masterclass. When I talk about how uh, God gave me this framework uh, called Power of One Framework, which is what is the number one solution you are provide to your number one audience, uh, no matter your nonprofit or for profit. And uh, uh, so with your number one communication by the best current version of you or your organization, one, 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 one. And that's why it's Power One. And uh, you can, I trust that you can benefit from that masterclass is free. And from there, you are on my subscriber list. And uh, so when next time when I have workshop come up, you'll be notified it. And obviously, also, please welcome to subscribe to the podcast, Christian CEO podcast. Um, and like Jim say, Instagram, Instagram, you can see a lot of behind the scenes stuff. My dog, if you like dog, <laughs> all the real life stuff in my stories. And yeah, so happy to connect with you guys. Everywhere is a Katie Bader, B-A-A-D-E-R. It's a German last name. It's my husband's yeah. Swiss last name. So absolutely. Well, we'll have all the information. We'll put it down in the description below. We'll make sure that it's on the screen and, and everything else for our viewers. And uh, Kelly, what an incredible blessing. Uh, that uh, you've been for our viewers. And uh, I just I, I just pray that God would continue to use you in a mighty way. And thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to be with us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Honor is all mine. If you enjoyed this interview by Kelly Bader, give it a thumbs up on the like button and be sure to subscribe to this channel. Watch future videos by clicking the notification. And of course, always watch our past videos to learn more how to increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Take care.